650 families are still waiting for the materials. Ideally, the new houses are made of brick, but here brick making is impossible because of the soil, so new homes are being constructed from wood and rubble. But until the government provide the promised cement, they are open to the elements. Yeah, para minha casa só que pronto, minha casa no cimento estaria pronto. My house would be finished already, but there's a lack of materials like cement and nails, so this is all I can do. When the weather is bad and it's raining, the water gets into the house and my family and I all get wet. So what's gone wrong? The authorities say it isn't easy distributing materials in the delta. There's not much we can do at this time of the year. And when we restart the process, we won't be able to deliver materials for all 55,000 families at the same time. It's a gradual process. The Zambezi River meets the Indian Ocean at the island of Shindi. And here, there's dramatic evidence of the problems caused by climate change. The sea level is rising rapidly. Trees planted to stop erosion along the coastline have already been destroyed. This was once an important port, but now it has largely disappeared beneath the water. Only the ruins of a few old buildings and jetties still remain. Back in the Portuguese colonial era, Shindi was a busy town but fell into decline during the brutal 15-year civil war that followed Mozambique's independence. Now there are only two cars on the island and there is no electricity. Alfente Jemo Shiremba attends church on Sunday morning. He once had the job of ironing the clothes of the Portuguese administrator here, and he remembers the earlier Shindi towns, Shindi 1 and Shindi 2, before they were engulfed by water. Shindi 1 acabou com água. Shindi 2 Shindi 1 was taken by the water. So was Shindi 2. And Shindi 3 is still being flooded by the Zambezi River. There is no port here anymore, and Shindi 3 is being taken. Shindi will be finished. Those who have been moved to escape rising waters and the constant danger of flooding in the Shindi area have been given new homes at the Matildi resettlement village. Here too there are problems. Many houses haven't been completed, and the soil is not good for farming. Here, as elsewhere across the delta, villagers were given free food when they first moved. But as from February this year, that's been stopped. Almeida Adolfo now works in an almost empty food store. He warns that now food distribution has ended, many villagers are moving back to their old farmlands. They are not just commuting for the day, but living back in their old homes, especially if their new homes haven't been completed. Naturally, the main factor that makes people go back to their homelands is their culture and traditions. Their own areas are more familiar to them. They have bigger fields and they can feed their families. The area is better for farming and so they are going back to these areas so they can grow more. Horatio Jr., who works at Matildi Resettlement Village, is travelling with a friend out to the lowlands, to the flood risk area of Marabao Island, to check on a farmer they know who has gone back to his old house there to live. It isn't an easy journey. After a lengthy boat ride, they walk for over a kilometre through the lush, wet vegetation and then through muddy swamps and flooded fields. It would be difficult to commute here from Matildi every day. But this is where Evaristo Pereira now chooses to live with his wife and family, rather than in the uncompleted house he has been given back at Matildi. Here there are coconuts. And he can grow sugarcane, maize, rice and bananas. 
He's close to the river, so there is always water. So long as there are no floods, it's ideal. When I was in Matildi, I didn't have what I needed. But here I am self-sufficient. When there is a drought, I don't eat anything in Matildi. But here I can survive. I prefer staying here because all my things are here. Here I can work and eat enough, but I can't do that in Matildi. So I only go to Matildi if there are problems here. The Delta farmers have to make a choice. In the resettlement villages, they are safe, but are sometimes a long way from their fields. Down in the lowlands, they have food, but there's the constant danger of floods. And there are other problems, like disease. Hidden away in the grasslands near the village of Chupanga, there's the grave of Mary Moffat, the wife of the explorer, David Livingstone. She died here in April 1862, from malaria. Mosquitoes breed in the swamps and grasslands, and malaria is still a major killer in the Zambezi Delta. Those who live here face other problems like skin infection from the humidity. Life expectancy is just 42 years. It's far safer to stay on the higher ground in the resettlement village, where there is less disease and there are clinics and medical centers. In Shupanga Clinic, Amilcar Daniel prescribes drugs for a patient with stomach problems caused by parasites in dirty water. He's worried that if farmers move back to their original homes, they will put their lives at risk. That's because they don't have health care or any kind of assistance. They just stay there for long periods while their problems increase. Some only come for help when they become seriously ill and others have died because they live there. There's another advantage for living in a resettlement village, education. At Shupanga, children line up before lessons to sing the Mozambique national anthem. Here, as at other resettlement centers, there's a brand new school. Back in the 80s, during the Civil War, many of the schools in the Delta and elsewhere across the country were abandoned. But over the past decade, the number of children attending primary school has tripled, and for the first seven years, education in Mozambique is free. This is the old neighborhood school, which used to provide education for children living down in the lowlands before the new resettlement village was built. Today, it's abandoned. It was closed two years ago, a victim of climate change. During the floods in recent years, the school was underwater. And yet families are now returning to this very same area. Manuel Don Luis is walking back to his old house, just a few yards from the abandoned school, with his 10-year-old daughter Maria and his wife and baby. They have come here because this is where they can grow food. His daughter used to go to the now-closed school, but she can't go to the new school in Shupanga because she's too young to stay in the resettlement village and look after herself. Manuel has had to choose between her education and her survival. She missed the class today because of the lack of food. Even if we had food, she's not able to cook. That's why we brought her here. She has to be with her mother. She missed school, and school is good, but she missed it because of hunger. If she had food, she could have been there, but she can't go to school with no food. That's the problem. At Kaya, in the heart of the Delta, there's a massive new development the Zambezi River Bridge. It will replace the ferry service across the Zambezi and provide a road link between the north and south of the country for the first time. It's a spectacular project costing 80 million euros and funded, among others, by the EU as well as the Mozambique government. For the moment, at least, it provides new employment for those living in nearby resettlement villages. And there are other schemes, like this new road being built to a new settlement. The government would like to see the region transformed, with the resettlement villages becoming the new towns of the future. But it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. 
but we're doing everything to overcome the problems, to create more motivation in these new areas, so the population stay there permanently. So, one of our aims is to create income generation schemes to increase the potential of the region. This is the main challenge. It's vital to keep the population in the higher land. It's vital to avoid future disasters. In the resettlement villages, the Delta farmers and their families have fresh water, education, medical care and, above all, safety. And eventually it's hoped there will be good new housing for all. But if there's no decent housing and not enough work or food, more and more farmers living far from their fields will be tempted to move back to the lowlands. And back to the banks of the river that can bring life or death.